Hey y'all, in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing four breakfast ideas, two of which is just my own ideas, and the other two is coming out of this Taste of Home Farmhouse Favorites cookbook. And this cookbook is very special to me. This was one of the last gifts that my mother-in-law got me this past Christmas, who has recently passed, if you didn't know. So I definitely want to make as many things out of this book that I can. Um, she knew that I loved cookbooks, so I was very excited to get this. But like I said, now it's even more special. So definitely glad to share a couple of those with you guys. Um, I know that she got this from Walmart, so I shouldn't have any problem like finding a link to put it in my description box. That way you guys can order it if you're interested. But also both of the things that I made, I was able to find on Pinterest. So I can link the recipes as well. But everything that I made in this video, we all really enjoy. They were all new to us. Um, and yeah, hopefully this will help inspire you a little bit, give you an idea or two. So let's go ahead and jump on into these recipes. Okay, so first up, I made some pineapple upside down pancakes. These were extremely simple to throw together. So of course you're gonna need some sort of pancake batter. You could totally make a homemade one, or you can be like me and just use a box mix that you just add water to. That's what I had in my pantry, so that's what I wanted to use. So I also pulled out my brown sugar, a can of pineapple slices, and these cherries. I always like to cook my pancakes in butter. That's what we prefer. So as you can see, I'm just melting that over my electric griddle. I honestly prefer to cook my pancakes in a skillet because they always come out a lot nicer looking. But in the moment, I always think to myself, well, I'll give this griddle another try. I'm gonna get it right this time. And I can save time by cooking more at once. But I almost always end up somewhat regretting it. I am just not good at cooking on these things, and I say it every time that I pull it out, but basically just cook it in whatever you feel the most confident cooking it on. But yeah, so as soon as I got all of my batter laid down, I immediately started to lay down the pineapple slices. We love pineapple in this house. I honestly need to start making like more recipes, like including them. You could also use fresh pineapple if you wanted to, but like I said, I was just using what I had in the pantry. I didn't have to go to the store for anything for this meal, which is always super nice, but just use whatever pineapple you want to. And now I'm just taking a spoonful of that brown sugar and just trying to evenly sprinkle it over each one. And if you make these, do not skip this step because as soon as you turn these over, that brown sugar is going to start like caramelizing the pineapples, which is absolutely what makes these so delicious in my opinion. So now that I've got all that done, I'm just going to take the cherries and simply place that directly in the middle of the pancakes. So here we go. Here's exactly what I'm talking about. That one was okay. Um, but as I keep going, you'll see that it's just too dark on the other side and every single time I make pancakes on this thing this is what they look like and you would think that I had my temperature up like really high but honestly didn't I guess that I just left them maybe a little too long I don't know but if you know me at all you know I'm not about to waste all of that food and try to start over like we will be fine but honestly that caramelized pineapple and cherry flavor overpowered where I overcooked it so I would say it's a pretty forgiving recipe but the way that we topped it we just did a drizzle of some regular pancake syrup and I remembered I had some whipped cream so I decided to add that on top with a cherry on top of that. I actually ended up loving the way that these looked, especially with the pineapple facing up, of course. But y'all, these tasted so good. We absolutely love them, and they are a new favorite for sure. I just thought it was a really fun way to spruce up some like box pancake mix, and there's a good chance that a lot of you guys probably already have the ingredients on hand to make these. They were super fast to throw together, and I remember that I had some turkey bacon in the freezer, which is something we like never have, but we ended up really enjoying that as well. Next up, I'm going to try out the first recipe that is listed in this book, and that is this ham and collards quiche. I was super excited to try this one because I love quiche, and I thought that this was a cool little twist to it. Um, so the recipe did call for frozen collards, and I really love the idea of that, but they were not available anywhere. So I had to go with the fresh. You definitely don't need that many. Just putting that out there. Um, you also need one pie crust. It called for diced ham. I'm just going to dice up some of this ham steak. It did call for a different cheese. I can't even think of it off the top of my head. 
but I just used what I already had. It's a mozzarella and cheddar blend. You'll also need some milk and eggs. These are my favorite eggs to buy. Um, you'll need some olive oil. I'm using onion powder in place of an actual onion. I also have some minced garlic and some salt and pepper. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull out my pie dish and I'm just going to make that pie crust fit into it. So I'm just kind of pressing it down, making sure to really press it up against the sides. And I'm taking my fingers and kind of pressing it into like the crevices of the dish. And I'm just going to go ahead and pop that in my fridge so it can stay chill while I prepare everything else. So I'm going to start by heating up a couple tablespoons of olive oil. Once my skillet was nice and hot, I went ahead and added in some of those shredded collards and I seasoned with the onion powder so I'm just gonna saute those around and let those cook down for a little bit and while those are cooking away I'm gonna go ahead and dice up my ham so I'm only gonna be using half of that ham steak I'll save the other half for another recipe and I'm just gonna dice this as small as I possibly can so I'm just kind of cutting it down into like thin strips and then I turned it the other way and I'm just doing a fine dice on it and now we have our cubed ham so back to the skillet, I'm going to add in a spoonful of minced garlic, let that cook with the collards for a couple of minutes, and then I'm just going to season the greens with the salt and pepper. So I'm going to kind of scoot those over to the side, and I also cook the ham for just a couple of minutes just to remove like any excess moisture so it won't be like watery. Um, and then I turned off my skillet, and I let it cool down slightly, and then I added in that full bag of cheese. Um, and that way, you know, it's not going to turn into like a big melted glob of a mess. So I just stirred all of that together and I'm going to place that into the bottom of the pie crust. After I got that spread out into an even layer, I'm going to grab a small mixing bowl and I'm just going to get all of my eggs cracked in there. I'm also going to go ahead and add in my milk. I have noticed with like any quiche recipe I've ever tried, it never calls for like the egg and milk mixture to be seasoned, but it's just something I have to do. So I decided to add in some garlic, salt, and pepper. And I just got that whisked together really well. And that is going to get poured all over the top. So now this is going to get transferred to the oven. Go very slowly so the egg doesn't like slosh out everywhere. My oven is already preheated to 375 degrees. And I'm going to set my timer for 35 minutes. And just like a cake or anything else basically, you can just check it with like a toothpick or a knife. And if it comes out clean, you know that it is ready. So there it is. It looks gorgeous. I'm going to let it rest for like 10 to 15 minutes before I cut into it. Of course, I had to show y'all what the inside looked like once it was cut. And as you can see, it's just like super cheesy and fully loaded. Y'all, this was the best quiche I have ever had in my entire life. The eggs were just like super fluffy. Um, I love the cheesiness and the ham and collard flavor just works so well with this. This was hands down my favorite recipe from this entire video. Next, we are having steak burritos. I found this package of burrito sized tortillas like hidden in my pantry and it was just a little bit past the best buy date. So that was my inspiration for making these burritos. I knew that I wanted to use those and Josh grilled us some steaks for Mother's Day. Um, and this is what was left over and I knew that I wanted to repurpose them in a good way I also found this half bag of like shredded hash browns in my freezer and I know they've been in there a while So wanted to finish that off. I'm gonna scramble up some eggs Of course, you got to have some cheese and I found this garlic aioli in my pantry as well I have never had that before this is new to us. So I was really curious what that was all about so the first thing I got started was the hash browns since those take the longest. I just simply follow the directions on the bag except I use olive oil instead of vegetable oil and I like to season them with that steak and shake seasoning. Um, I already went ahead and thinly sliced up my steak. These were ribeye steaks by the way and he cooked them on a charcoal grill so I really love the smokiness that that added to these burritos. So once those hash browns were done, I went ahead and pulled out another skillet to get the egg started. I just melted down some butter, whipped those up really good. I don't add milk or anything to them. Um, and I just seasoned it with simple salt and pepper. Very basic. Once those were halfway cooked through, I threw the steak into the skillet and just let that heat up for a couple of minutes. Definitely didn't want to overcook that.
I did take the burritos and add them to a hot skillet that's been sprayed with some Pam. That way I could crisp up both sides for like just a couple of minutes. And this one that I'm showing you was Josh's burrito. And I always have a tendency to want to like overfill his and it's always a pain to roll up and get it to stay together. But I made it work and I was able to get four big burritos out of all the ingredients that I showed you. And as you can imagine, these were like super filling, definitely not our normal breakfast, but I just cannot believe that I have never made steak burritos before. I really don't even do breakfast burritos at all. It's been a really long time, but these were really good. Love that garlic aioli and the flavor that brought. And like I said before, the smokiness from the steak, so good. This was Josh's favorite um, breakfast from this video. And as you can see, I just served it with a side of strawberries. For the last breakfast idea in this video, I made this blueberry streusel coffee cake from the cookbook. I really like that it had like few ingredients. So first off, of course, you'll need some blueberries. You'll also need some milk, baking powder, and salt. And underneath that in those canisters is where I store my flour and sugar. You'll need one stick of unsalted butter at room temperature, as well as an egg at room temperature some pecans. I am going to chop those up finer. And then you'll need four tablespoons of some cold butter. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bowl and get my dry ingredients mixed together. So that is the all-purpose flour, baking powder, and salt. And I'm just going to quickly whisk that together. To a, another mixing bowl, I'm going to take the room temperature butter and I'm going to add the regular granulated sugar to it. And I'm just going to take my electric mixer and get those two things creamed together until it's nice and smooth. So now I'm going to add in my milk. I'm pretty sure the recipe called for whole milk for this, but I don't ever buy that. So I just use 2%. I'm also gonna go ahead and add in that room temperature egg. Y'all, I do not know what went wrong or why this separated, but looking at this makes my stomach churn. I know that it looks disgusting. I thought to myself for sure, once again, I have messed something up, but I just kind of went with my gut and continued on with the recipe. And I went ahead and added the dry ingredients into the wet. And as soon as I started folding it together, it all just like magically came together and you would have never known that that happened. So it all worked out in the end, thankfully. So I just continued folding that together until I no longer saw like any loose flour. And then I went ahead and added in the blueberries and the chopped pecans. We loved the addition of the pecans with the blueberries. It went together so well and we just rarely ever have pecans. I don't know why. I guess it's just one of those foods that we don't ever think to have, but it was a very, very nice addition. So once I got that all incorporated, I pulled out my nine by nine bacon dish and sprayed it with some Pam, got that dumped out and I'm just spreading that out into an even layer and not even going to lie, this part was a bit of a pain because that batter is like extremely thick and you can't tell it because I had this clip sped up, but it did take me a little bit to get that all smooth out, but I finally got it and I'm going to scoot that on over to the side and Go on to the last step, which is making the streusel topping. So all you do is mix together the sugar and the flour, and then you're going to add in that cold butter. And the way that I did that, I just added it in with like thin slices. And then I'm taking the back of my fork, and that is how I cut the butter into the flour and sugar mixture. So it's kind of similar to making like homemade biscuits, except, you know, you don't add sugar into the biscuits, but... Yeah, that took a little bit of elbow grease, but I got it done and it should look crumbly like this. And any like big pieces of butter that I saw, I just kind of ran it through my fingers to get that broken apart. So I'm just going to spoon that over the top evenly. And then that's going to go in the oven for 35 minutes at 375 degrees. So here's what it looked like when it came out. My kitchen smelled so amazing. I did move that to a cooling rack so that the air could kind of circulate underneath it so that it wouldn't overbake. But I did let that sit for about 40 minutes before I cut into it. And here is my plate. I think that it looks beautiful. We all love like anything made with blueberries. So it was a huge hit and it doesn't really look like it in this clip, but in person, these are pretty thick. So honestly, you could cut this serving in half and this recipe could feed a lot of people, trust me. And what is coffee cake without a hot cup of coffee to go with it? This Cold Stone Sweet Cream Coffee Creamer is my absolute favorite and I have tried so, so many until I found the perfect one. But that is going to wrap up this video. I know it's been a while since I've done a breakfast one, so I really hope you enjoyed it. I appreciate you for watching and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye guys.